Hi, I'm Natalie Rhodes, and this is Into Math's fifth grade, module 15, lesson one. I'm gonna start off by going over the I can objective. It says I can multiply decimals by powers of 10 that are both greater than and less than one. The learning objective is to find patterns and products when multiplying by powers of 10. The prior learning is that students recognize that a digit in a multi-digit whole number in a certain place represents a value 10 times the value of the digit in the place to its right. All right, so moving into the lesson in 369, we have a spark your learning. It says DNA is the genetic code that determines many of your traits. It is found rolled up inside your body cell. Uncoiled, each strand of DNA is, seven, is 71.0 inches long. This measurement is equivalent to about 1.8 meters. What is the length of 10 uncoiled DNA strands placed end to end in inches and in meters? So they want 10 of the 71 inches and 10 of the 1.8 meters. So I'm gonna show you how to do this with powers of 10. There's two different things that's going on here. We're doing powers of 10 with a whole number and we're doing powers of 10 with a decimal. So there's two different parts. So as we know, if we took 71 and we multiplied it by 10, our powers of 10 trick is just take our whole number, 71, and because you're multiplying by 10, 10 has one zero, you would add one zero at the end. I'm gonna show you how else this is true because technically they give us a decimal. So right underneath it, I'm gonna do 71.0. This is gonna be multiplied by 10. All right, so for a decimal, just the trick right off the bat is you are going to move the decimal to the right. You're gonna hop the decimal over here to the right so that it's now right there. The reason you move the decimal to the right is because all the numbers shift to the left and the zero becomes a bigger place value. So the seven that was in the tens place is now gonna be in the hundreds place. The one that was in the ones place is now in the tens place. And the zero that was in the tenths place is now in the ones place. So by moving the decimal, you shift all of the digits into the bigger next place value. That's why we want to move the decimal to the right because it moves all the numbers bigger and multiplying we want them to be bigger. So we're gonna use that for the same with the meters. So that's gonna be 710 inches. Now with the meters, we have 1.8. And again, we're multiplying that by 10. Because there's only one zero, we're gonna move it one time. If we were multiplying by 100, we would jump the decimal twice because there would be two zeros and 100. Because for right now, we're just doing 10, there's just one zero, we're just moving the decimal one time. So it's going to go to the right to make that number bigger. So now we're shifting the 8 across. So now it would be equal to 18 and the decimal would be right there. And that's going to be in meters. So it's going to be 18 holes. You can also write this as 18.0. Same thing. Any whole number always has a decimal. So if you're ever confronted with a number like 71 and it didn't have a decimal, remember, just think about it as dollars. That decimal place on a whole number is always at the very end. And you can always add 0, 0.0 to help you see it a little bit better. All right, let's go ahead and flip the page. We're going to be on 370. It says a discount store sells all items for 98 cents each. Items can be bought in boxes of 10, 100, or 1,000. Jolene wants to know how much each box will cost. So it shows the pattern here. 1 times 0 0.98 is just 0 0.98. It doesn't change. Now, if I have it multiplied by 10, there's one zero, which means the decimal place moves once. So now it's in between the 9 and the 8. Look at the 100. There's two zeros, which means that decimal place is going to move twice. Now the decimal place is technically at the end of the 98. And then with a thousand, there's three zeros. So that decimal place is going to move once, twice, three times that open spot is now going to become that zero. 
All right, for A, it says, how much will it cost to buy one box of 10 items? So you're just writing down the cost as in dollars. And it gives it to you up above, so this one shouldn't be too tough for you. For B, now it wants to know the place value of the of the nine in each of these numbers. So what's the place value of the nine in the 0.98? What's the value of the nine in the 9.80? So you're writing the place values for B. C, in which direction do the digits shift? So remember, which way are the digits going? And then for D, it's asking the same question, but it's asking the position of the decimal point. So which way are the digits going? Which way is the decimal point going? And then for E, show the movement of the decimal point in the pattern above. Lucky you, I already did it. So you get to just copy what I did for E. All right, go ahead and solve these few problems. Come back and we'll do it together. Go ahead and hit pause here. All right, let's go ahead and solve these together. So we're writing what it gives us just as money. So one box of, um, of 10 items, that's the second one right here. So that's going to be $9.80. The second one of 100 items is here. That's going to be $98. And then the third one for 1,000 items, that one's $980. So now we're writing down the place value. So the 9 right here... That's in the tenths place value. The nine in this one is in the ones. The nine and 98, 90, that's in the tens place value. And then the nine and 900, that's in the hundreds. And notice what's going on with the place value. It's getting bigger, right? It's going from tens to ones, to tens, to hundreds. It's just getting bigger by one place value. So in which direction do the digits shift? So look at the numbers, right? Digits, numbers. The numbers are moving to the left, right? It's going 10th, then to ones, then to tens, then to hundreds, right? That's going to the left. To where the opposite of true, if the digits are going to the left, that means the decimal place. Remember how I was moving it here and I can put the arrow on the edges of these? The digit is moving, I'm sorry, the decimal place, the decimal point is moving to the right. So in which direction does it go? The decimal point is moving to the right. And then show the movement of the decimals. I did that. So one doesn't change. Um, for 10, it just moves once between the nine and the eight. For 100, you should have two jumps landing at the end of the eight. And then for 1,000, you really should show three jumps. And that third jump should make sure it's big enough to add in that zero for the very end. All right, go ahead and finish up the rest of your problems. And I'll see you back for lesson two.